All right, welcome to Leafs Talk. I'm J.D. Bunkus, joined by Justin Bourne and Sam McKee. You know, we we sit in what is essentially the virtual green room for about five minutes <laughs> after the game ends. And normally we have to tell each other to shut up and save it for the show because <laughs> we want to squeeze out a thought or two and we're excited to share the things we'd like to say. And it was quiet in the green room today. <laughs> this is actually the first words we've spoken to each other. There there was some sounds yeah. like, oh, and... <laughs> Some f words quietly. I this the only move. I just can't imagine that there's a like. I'm sure there are people that are angry. I'm sure there are people that are gonna spin this one as another. It's fine. The Leafs got goalied, but to me, just the mood. I hate to say it is just pure. De, I'm just de dejected. It, that is a wind out of the sails, gut punch loss. However you want to describe it. I'm still processing what the hell happened, Borny. Yeah. You know, everyone's so sick. There's no moral victories left for this Toronto Maple Leafs team. You know, if this is six years ago, you might talk about how that's a game you deserve to win. And, and you do. But that's not how hockey works. And the Florida Panthers goaltender was exceptional. So you have to do the things that make him unexceptional. And for me, the story of the game is no second chances for the Leafs. A ton of chances. Off the rush, and then one save, and it's gone. One shot, and it's gone. I can't think of a second shot they got on net. They got a couple of rebound whacks. Almost nothing. No second chance opportunities, which to me is how you solve a hot goaltender. Yeah, you. It's, it comes down to bearing your chances, and you yeah. got to bear down and put some away here. Like I know you can talk about the getting goalied or whatever you want to say, but they had way too many chances from way too many high paid guys that just didn't go in the back of the net tonight. Like they're just, it really, really was a matter of, yeah, sure. They got chances and you can talk about that as a positive and they dominated long stretches of the game, but at some point your high skill players have to find the back of the net and they absolutely did not. Yeah. To me, uh, listen, there's some offensive process stuff born. I agree. I hadn't even really thought about it like that. And I'll say that one of the notes I had is how they started to solve Ilya San or, or sorry, uh, Vasilevsky in the last round was by getting bodies in front and tipping pucks. And that seems to have gone away a little bit for them, or at least the bounces off the tips. But to me, the story of this game is just, listen, it was the buzzword two years ago and it kind of flew around when they got to the first round, but killer instinct. You're up two goals at home. The crowd is behind you. You make a mistake. The Panthers are back in the game. And instead of being able to rally and find that winning spirit, you kind of fall apart and lose yourself for essentially a, a, an entire period in the least. Ah, I mean, I don't easy. think they fell apart though, JD, like they played Oof. some good hockey from the 30 minute mark to the 60 minute mark. I, I, I didn't find the second period and especially the start to be a very impressive at all. Well, the start is what cost them this game, fellas. That's what I mean. Yeah. That's I mean, that minute. And it's, and it's, and it's your two, two of your high paid stars that cough the puck up in a horrific spot. You look at Willie Nylander, who had tons of real estate going north, turns back, falls down, puck ends up in his stick. Awful goal by Samsonov. Like, you can say he was maybe screened. You can say whatever you want. That's a wrister from the top of the circle that goes in right beside his glove. It's an awful goal to let in. And then Matthews coming up the middle, tries cutesy flip play for some reason that goes into somebody's gut and it goes back into your net. So, like, they did play well in the second period, but, like, what did Keith preach the entire morning today, post game yesterday? Every time you put a microphone in front of his face, we have to limit the mistakes. The mistakes are what's killing us the first two games. And your two biggest stars or two of your biggest stars make glaring mistakes. And I know both of them were brilliant throughout the rest of the game, but mm -hmm. that's what cost them. They're two stars making huge boneheaded errors in the middle of the ice that end up in the back of your net. Yeah, if you uh, if you look at my article after game one, one of the things I wrote about was you don't have to push for offensive chances against this team because they're going to come. You're going to get them. You can't get so obsessed with offense that you forget how quick they can turn back and score. That's what happens with this Panthers team is this that rope-a-dope quick strike. And, and that's the thing is that you can't forget about that end of the puck against Florida that create, they're too good at creating. And so, yeah a brutal start to the second period is the hockey game in the end. And 
I thought all those guys were great, Sammy. And I agree that they were, those are bad plays, but like, I mean, I thought Nylander was, that's the best I've seen him look in months. I so agree. is that, is that two more goals five seconds after turnovers for them? It, it'd be or close. Like, if it's not five, it's six or seven. It's close. It's just, they're killing. They're just killing themselves out there. Like they're just yeah. the mistakes that they're making and the turnovers are just, it's blatant. And they can have these dominant stretches and they were breathtakingly good in the third period, fellas. Like I can't overstate how incredible they were, but they just didn't finish. And that's the most important part of the game is yeah. putting the puck in the net and they didn't do it. Yeah, I, I agree. And I, I guess like we can agree to disagree about the second period. I thought that the Leafs found their level later in it, but I, I tweeted it that it was a character moment for this team that they had to bear down at the beginning of that second period and basically come out the way that they did in the first. And to me, it looked like a group that was nervous and that was a little tight and that they made mistakes. And again, Marner on the second one specifically to me where he just has that opportunity to skate the puck out and he decides to try to make a cute play. Like it's just not the winning brand that we've seen from so many teams. Just get the puck out. Don't allow the counterpunch team to come back and drill you with one. And yeah, like, again, they end up kind of being fine. It's a weird game to evaluate because you like a lot of the process, Ugh. but this, this, these are the moments, man. And like, you had it, like you had the game right there. You were the better team. You came out, you were dominant. You couldn't finish a couple of chances. Who cares? Stick with it. Stick with the process. And yeah, yeah it just shows you that this game is cruel. And if you have a let up for even a little bit of time against a dangerous team with a bunch of really good forwards, they can bite you in the ass. So yeah, to me, it just, that, that beginning of the second period is just, that's, it's everything to me. Like, and, it's and just, also the, the two, one goal is a backbreaker too, right? Like the Leafs were absolutely running show and, yeah. you know, the thing's starting to sniff out one of the, Oh, this is the seven, two game type of moments and all of a sudden one's in your net and it really changed the tone of the game. It felt like point night, I think early for these guys. That, yeah. That's, that's when to me, Bobrovsky was at his absolute best after they made it to zip. The Leafs had a ton of excellent chances mm. within that, within that five minute stretch. I don't know how long they scored after the Leafs scored their second one, but Bobrovsky made a bunch of really good saves in that little period there that yeah. really kept them in touch. Like it easily could have gone to three or four, nothing. And once again, I will throw some shade at Vasilevsky. If it's Vasilevsky in net, this is legitimately a five, nothing game by the end of the first mm. period. Like they just, Bobrovsky was really, really good throughout the game. And I don't think he's the number one reason they lost or anything, but there was that stretch right after they made it to nothing where he locked it down and it really kind of debilitated at Leafs. It felt like he, he was brilliant. And the Leafs had a, a couple of pucks that just end up dribbling wide, hit some posts, you know, uh, just a, a couple of bad breaks, non finishes, but yeah. He, he, how do you think John Tavares is going to feel about Bobrovsky after tonight? Like that guy is going to be 100% in his kitchen and, like, man, this is a tough one for Tavares because he blows the shoe on the first goal, which is just a, a bad break, I guess. I think that Nila, or sorry, Lilligren ends up taking a hit. And I don't like, what's he supposed to do there? Is the puck not supposed to go there, Born? Like, I, I don't know if yeah, that's. Yeah, you a, don't reverse the puck behind your own net. You know, yeah. like uh, you can reverse it the other way when you're skating behind the net, reverse it back into the corner. He puts it in, but uh, you know, Tavares is there until he falls. So tough to fault him too much. Yeah. I, I just. To, to me, maybe again, maybe it's just the the ghosts. Maybe it's the like lifelong Leaf observer, but it just, the tone of the game seemed to shift so much. And it just felt like this was their opportunity to show what a different team they were by coming out in that second and basically playing like, hey, this was, this is going to be different. And it just, it wasn't. And then to me, there was just like, it's like anything, you know, life, sports, whatever. When you get knocked down, when you get punched in the mouth, how do you respond? And it, I just, I didn't love the response at the beginning of the second period. I'll just leave it that, at that one. That's all I got to say about that. Because, yeah, Bobrovsky was brilliant. I love that Nylander showed up in the third period and played what was, yes, absolutely his best hockey of the year. Like, I don't think I've ever seen him that locked in. By the way, I, I just, as an aside to the Nylander thing, if anyone's ever curious as to why he gets criticized so much, like that's why. Watch because, the third period. Yeah. Watch him try to get his 40th that. goal in game 82. Watch him tonight. Like that's it. Elite, when, elite, it, elite player. Like, and then I would ask a Leaf fan this is, do you have faith that that's going to have carryover? Because I actually feel like that's one of the keys to the rest of the series moving forward. If you can get that guy the rest of the way, 
like you can claw your way back. If he yeah. shows up as the guy from game one, I'm not sure you can. Yeah, we got we got a few clips of him getting chances at the net. This tip goes in off the post, which he halfway celebrates. He had actually a lot of setups too. He was the guy that set up Neil or sorry uh, Tavares for a couple of his chances, but his ability to to cut in. He had nine controlled entries tonight for the Leafs. Next highest in the game was four. You know, if you look at some of the stats in general for this Toronto Maple Leafs team, guys, it was crazy lopsided. Twenty five slot shots for the Leafs tonight. To 14 for the uh, for the Florida Panthers, uh, 15 scoring chances off the cycle to six for the Panthers, like 98 controlled exits to 60. They had the puck most of the night, minus that bad minute. And so that's I think it's tough sitting here right now because we've made excuses for them in the past and said process doesn't matter anymore. But Willie, God, taking it across the net like everything I asked him to do in my article, and it just Bobrovsky stopped everything. Borny, I actually, I, I like, I don't think it's too far afield that somebody read your article. <laughs> like, I just, like, you're just, like, you're Justin Bourne. You used to be a video coach for this team, and he legitimately did exactly what you asked for him to do in the piece. I wanted one to go with, but I was rooting well, for him so bad. <laughs> well, yeah. Like, you're by, like, you know, Sheldon. Sheldon was like, hey, Willie, I got a piece of writing yeah. for you here to read. <laughs> Do you want to read something, pal? Yeah. <laughs> read this. This is valuable. Like, he, you, this can matter to you. He performs after getting the wrist slap. Like, he, he's a guy who doesn't, you know, disappear. He's better when he gets a little kick in the butt. Borny. Absolutely. I, I wrote at the top of my notes when the Leafs showed up and were just dominant to start this game because, yeah, the first 10 minutes of this hockey game, that's as good as you'll see the Leafs play, right? Yeah. Like, just. Mm -hmm completely had Unlocked. Florida underwater. And, and if it's not for Bobrovsky, it's a complete runaway, like, early on. I actually thought, did, you remember the one moment he went to, like, the bench after the second goal to get water? Did you see yeah. that? I, I actually wondered if they were just like, oh, we got to preserve him because this is going to be so bad. <laughs> like, I thought maybe they gave him corner just throws in the towel. Yeah, I thought it was going to be the hook. And I, I wrote at the very top of my thing, what a start. Take advantage of the jump. Get the crowd into it the PP whack boys show up again, Sammy, because it was like, they got the PP whack after the first game. Everybody didn't really come out with the energy, didn't come out with the jump. And then they had it and it was brilliant. And, and again, the question for me, the rest of the series, like as dejected as I am right now, I, I can't feel like a series is over when the team that was just that good lost. Yeah, I know. I know it's that, that is one of the more frustrating Leafs results of this like frustrating playoff era because yeah. one, one right now after playing that good, you'd be like, Oh baby, like this is not a particularly not. close fight. Like, yeah, Kachuk and them, you know, they, they contributed at a, had a nice goal, but otherwise we're a lot quieter tonight. I thought, you know, I just thought the hockey was good tonight. Was it not fun hockey? I know it feels well, bad now, but was it not a fun hockey game to watch? That, that first period I was hockey porn. Like hits, but like guys flying around the ice, goals, like excitement, yeah. so many hits, so much Good violence. I was like, this is excellent. And I was enjoying myself very, very much until about this, you know, 17 minute mark of the second period when it all went a little sour for the boys in blue. I don't know. It just, it's just such a, you're right, frustrating result because this is, you know, different than the results that they have. Like, you know, even in those, some of those series against, you know, I don't know, Montreal or, you know, I guess Columbus or whatever, they never had chances like they had in this game. They never had the middle of the ice like they did in this game. Like they were in front of the net. They were getting the middle of the ice. They were getting everything. And they just, like, I know Bobrovsky made some great saves or whatever, but it just really still felt like they couldn't convert on their great chances. So it's a different kind of feeling of a loss. There's no doubt. They played great. And it's just, that's what gives me hope going into the next couple of games, which there's very little of, but like they have played really well throughout this series. So I, I'm interested to know what they're going to look like in game three. Yeah. yeah. I, like I, I want to next them. week. Yeah. Which is, <laughs> yeah. We'll see you in 2024 for game three. Uh, any grip in the sticks too tight though, with some of the attempts. Hey, how about like Bobrovsky having Matthews numbers? Like he's had a cut, like a lot of clean looks. I actually thought he's gone high blocker so many times, mix it up. And he threw a couple five hole that I liked late, but might need to take one across Bobrovsky's body. Tavares is stumped. Can we do the Tavares pack? That guy, how many, here we go. How many chances did Tavares have tonight? Mm. It, it, 
it feels weird saying this when he has three like tr- genuinely grade A chances in this game. Yeah. And he was good in the dot, I guess. But I'll tell you, the worst shift of the game was this Tavares. This has got to be a goal. Uh, how do you not? Like, that's. I know. Oh, this is hard to watch. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll just say it. To me, Tavares was the worst leaf tonight. Like, t- 91 oh. killed him. Like, he's a premier goal scorer. He makes a million, sh- he makes a million bucks a season. You, you got to find the back times of the that by, the Times yeah. that by a lot. Eleven. Makes more than a million. Uh, Why well, I say a million? Eleven. I'm, I'm <laughs> flustered, buddy. I'm flustered. I, 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 honestly, this this loss kind of shook me a little bit to the core. I, I won't lie. This one, this one stung a little bit different. But yeah, Tavares with those three just great A gorgeous opportunities where he's got an opportunity to get the Leafs just this, back tied. He's this one here, to, yeah. Gotta go backhand. Gotta go backhand. That was like a weird he tries to, go, tries to go back across his body. He has the exact spot where Bun- – he was in the exact same spot where Bunting was, and he cut it to the backhand, and he stops and mm. kind of lets Bobrovsky reset by going to the forehand. If you go with a backhand, one quick move, bing, bang, it's in the back of the net. So he usually does go backhand on that play. Like, he's really proficient on the backhand, so surprised to see him cut that forward, let Bobrovsky reset. But That's yeah. what I'm asking you guys about a little bit of stick gripping. Yeah, you know, I, I do feel that that there is that element of pressure, right? When you're chasing the game a little bit and, you, you know, the in danger of going down to nothing at home. Like, sure, there there's an element of pressure there. It's And when these guys don't finish, you got to ask yourself why, because they finish so often so well. But, you know, it, I don't know. Sometimes it's just as simple as their goalie played great. I don't know. I don't know if it's that or not. But uh, I well, saw that Matthews, Marner, Tavares, and Neland are combined for 22 shots tonight. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Those three guys that were just awesome. Again, I really do think that Nylander basically saved Tavares by deciding to put on a show and dominate because mm-hmm. uh, like, I, I don't know how you guys feel about it, whether you think I'm being too critical or not, but I just thought that 91 tonight was slow. Um, his line got hemmed in. If you look at the second period stats, they were just absolutely getting caved in up until that point. They were just like really not a factor. He blows the shoe. He doesn't finish any of his opportunities. I just I, like, you, you got to be better than that. Like you just, you have to be better than what he gave Toronto tonight. I think it's fair. Like a coach will come to you as a goal scorer and his role is different than Sam Lafferty's. And so he'll, his numbers will look great today in uh, beyond goals, right? Expected goals. It's all going to look good, but they don't pay him to get expected goals. You know, you are a finisher at a finishing moment and he, you know, He's done that. He got the series winner last the uh, last series. But you're right. Tonight, when you're paid to finish and you don't finish, it's fair to receive a heap of criticism. And there was one in the final minute too, where he was on top of the blue and he like hooked it wide a little bit. Like yeah. he just if he he really does feel feast or famine with a lot of his chances on certain nights. Like some nights they're all yeah. going in for him, and sometimes he just feels like he's snake bit. And it was one of those nights where it just felt like he couldn't get one to go. Obviously. One thing that I think is notably different in this series is that it's harder to stand in front of Florida's net. Ekblad's a bit mean. Gudis is a bit mean. Mark Stahl's a bit mean. You know, like they they have a little bit more of that edge and they park there. And I, it doesn't feel like I mentioned off the top, no second chance opportunities. Guys don't seem to have the space there and there's there's just not been much room. So credit to Florida who probably watched the Tampa Bay series and said this an area where we have to eliminate second chances. Yeah, the Gudis, Stahl, uh, Ekblad trio, having one of those three guys on the ice at all times, there's a nastiness to them in front of the net. And same yeah. with their forwards, too. Like, the meanest play of the game that I text you guys and just said, mean, was Sam Bennett just <laughs> cross-checking. cross-check on Bunting? Dude, sometimes, like... You know, you see a hard hit in football and you go, how do guys get up and play football after that? Like, it's very rare where you see a hit in hockey that's that way, unless it's the one the other night with like Timo Meyer and Jacob Truber, right? right? It's just it's a once in a God knows how long event now in modern hockey. But that is the one where the lumber goes into the spine like that twice. Oh. And you know that there's no equipment there blocking the stick that is basically being broken over your back and he's just getting up and skating. I want to give just a little bit of credit to bunting. I I know I hate that work. I even doling out credit after they lost, but I I just thought again, he was quality for them. I I really noticed him a lot on the four check, just chipping pucks in pretty relentless pursuit from him all night. Still good. 
and and like where I want to give him credit is he seems to have found whatever this team needed from him, where it's the peskiness that constantly wants other players to beat up on him. How many times did you feel like Ekblad was on the verge of taking a penalty where he just throws his arm around his neck and just he looked at the ref and was like, oh, yeah, let it's, go. <laughs> it's like a big brother getting caught with a little brother and the parent yeah. walks back in the room always. But he's just been a dog going to that area and just taking that beating drew another penalty for them tonight. That's two. like it, it, the, the punishment's obviously over with him going up to the top line, but yeah, I, I like what I see from bunting too, with that group. I think you stick with that. Oh, oh we lost Sammy's audio. Again. They lost my key. So random how that happens. Yeah, Sammy's audio know. is just, what a it's world. just the, the, the bane of our show. What did you think about bunting? I, I, you know, I love his pop. Like he really is skating exceptionally well. Um, I don't know, maybe it's because he had a little bit extra rest, but he seems like lightning fast compared to regular season. So that's a plus. And you know what? It's going to be really important. Matthew Nyes is hurt. Oof, that dude. Okay. This, this was the one good thing about the way that they played down the stretch too, is that in the second, when things were starting to get a little screwy and I thought that the Leafs played their poorest hockey, I wrote yeah. down in my notes, should a college kid feel this important to a team that has Stanley Cup aspirations? Somebody that most people, like, dude, I tweeted, I think, with like five games left in the season, there's no way that Nyes cracks this roster, right? When they were yeah. just kind of putting it together as a team. And yeah, this this loss, the way they played it seems to paper over like his importance. But I was also feeling that where you need a goal, right? Like you need someone that can finish. And yeah. all of a sudden, Yarn croaks up the lineup and... Lafferty feels a lot more important. I liked Lafferty tonight, but all of a sudden it's just, he's a little too high and ugh. no, that's a great point. Didn't even register with me till we're talking about it here. Like he was on the ice for all their OT winners. He was on the ice for game tying goals. This guy has been a part of some big moments of this postseason. All of a sudden you're minus one guy who can make the opposition miss minus one guy who can make a read or finish a puck. And he does feel important, particularly when chasing offense. So, you know, it would if it were just the one play, I'd be like, he's probably going to be okay. But the Kachuk hit was to the head, and then the Bennett play. Bennett's got to get fined for that or something. I don't think it's a suspension, but um, yeah, I'm worried about Nyes' ability to return at all. Hey, but hey, boys, he's yeah. back. Bennett is a real pain in the ass. Yeah, like that. Would that like? I mean, listen, it was malicious behind the net, but it's playoff hockey. He didn't get a penalty for it. He maybe he'll get a fine or whatever, but like, you know, it's dirty, but it's hockey. I, I like it was a. I, he'll probably get fined, I guess. There and then go. like you guys were like you guys were talking about on like they get tied up there, and he makes a good effort to take him down. That's dirty play. He'll probably get fined, but like, God, you'd love to have him on the Leafs. He's I'm worried about really, the shoulder. But whose shoulder? Nice. Oh like, yeah. Way, way he falls on that play. Well, okay, because he's in big trouble. That was a that was a bad fall where he's not bracing himself. It could yeah. be shoulder, it could be head, it could be ribs, it could be any you know combination of those things. It was a really nasty fall, and I hated that he played another shift. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know why he came back out. Like, I guess he convinced them that he was fine, and he went back out there. But it just seemed like I was like, oh, he's he's back. Hey, that seemed a little fast. Like, I'm surprised they put him back out there so quickly. Yeah, it's yeah, it's so a tough fall. To you guys, like he's a gamer. There's a I played with a lot of guys who take some tough hits and go, I'm gonna sit a couple rotations out. He clearly wants to be out there and be on the ice. He's not afraid of this stuff. You know, like mm -hmm. he scored right after Kachuk was jawing at him the other night. Like he not he's not afraid, but you know, you can only take so much abuse. So the, yeah, they probably should have held him back a couple rotations without him making that call. He's a massive confidence guy. Like you see it even in his post-game pressers, the way that he speaks. And just the way that he carries himself, you can tell that this is a guy who's been six foot three and handsome and good at all the sports for his entire life. <laughs> like, just, uh, there are there are some images of Matthew Nyes that have floated around the internet with uh, members of the opposite sex, but in abundance. And yeah, it's no s surprise. Let's just say, and I I think that there is some carryover that to the game. But Borny, I mentioned there was one play to, uh, like where he just jumps a puck and it's kind of a harmless play, but. One where he has the opportunity to kind of take a little bit of contact and he shies away from it. And I was worried there. And it feel I don't know if this is just his lack of awareness, his willingness to take a hit, the gamerism that's in him. But 
boy, he has taken some low hit a lot. season. Yeah. And I, I wondered if this was just a cumulative effect thing and, and why this is like, do you have any idea as to why he continues to be just the victim of so many of these plays? Are they targeting him? Like, I, no, I don't know. I, it's so different. It's two things that are different. One is going from college to the NHL. It's an awareness thing of where guys are coming from and the style of play. Like it's a much more puck focused game the college game everyone's watching the puck it zips around a lot of passing it's not as much go through bodies as the nhl Mm -hmm. so that's one adjustment and then you know the difference bunk you know between playoff hockey and regular season hockey where guys go i'm not just gonna rub this guy out i'm I'm gonna hit this guy to hurt and we've seen that in this i can't believe the amount of big hits in leafs games over the past eight nine hockey games whatever they've been in playoffs for guys are getting blown up left and right so Guys are looking to put a body on you in a big way. And so Nice is dealing with those two things at once, and it's just a lot. I think it's just a lot different for him. Yeah. Uh, he Either way, I just – Big I, loss. I'm scared if, if he can't get in the lineup. Like, if he can't get in the lineup, it just – you're back in the situ- – the, the beauty of Nice is that all of a sudden your top six could once again be bunting and Nice. And even when you're chasing the game, you had two left wingers that could put a puck in the back of the net reliably. Sure. And now you're back to Yarncroc, who I, I st- like, what has he done so far through these? Did last- he play tonight? Maybe the least impactful leaf through, I'm just going to do the math, eight games of playoffs. Like, Absolute I, I, nightmare. He's not even doing his patented missed the net by eight feet. Like, can, I, can I get one of those in the mix to know you're alive? Are you, are you checking his minutes, Sam? Yeah, I made him check his minutes. Oh, he played a Wait. lot because. Got, he no, got, he did not play a lot. He played 728 tonight, fellas. Oof, I thought he had, dude, that's shocking. So they know. 728? Dude, you know yeah. what's so funny? This is the classic case of me going, he played a lot because I notice him every time I'm out there because I clock him and go, You're mad at him. Do something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I just, I, I got to be honest, fellas. I watched this game incredibly closely. Obviously, I, I didn't, I didn't see him. Like, I don't, did, did CC call his name? Like, Seven. I, 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 that's wow. just like, he would be the guy that would come out, I guess, next time if Nyes was a- around, like, that's what, isn't that Boy, what Zach Aston, Zach Aston Reese played seven last ta- game and then he came out. Like the, the TOI sheet's a disaster. Marner and Matthews played like 27 minutes without overtime tonight. Yarn Crocs is 728, Lafferty 821. That's massive distribution difference. Yeah. And can I, can I ask you oh, guys about that? Well, I was just going to say that, okay, so I, Paul Maurice has made it known that he's just rolling his lines over the boards. Like, he's not freaking out about the matchups, and he's not yeah. trying to make too much happen. He's just sort of letting his team free flow. And yes, Toronto was way better tonight, but also they really burned, like again, a ton of minutes with Matthews and Marner. And I, I just, I do think that there's a question about Keith's deployment and the over, it's, it's extremely strange to have a team that is basically looking for different line combinations every single night in the second round of the playoffs and has this much just in out. And then, yeah, you got to wonder a little bit about what is happening on that bench when it's like this, it, it has to feel frantic. And yeah, maybe it's crazy. They started the game with the lines. We all like, okay, they would be familiar with the lines they started the game with and they had a great first period. You know, it's once you start chasing the game, he, he makes some quick changes. I didn't necessarily love uh, the fourth line having a shift with two minutes left in the game there. It was it's weird. Like, can, it's like, can Good we line, though, tonight? Yeah, what, I guess. What line big plus for me. Yeah. But, but like, I, I didn't really need to see them at that point of the game, if I'm being mm-hmm. honest. Like, no, I, I can I, hear that. I, I would say that there's, it's been a little shaky here for Sheldon in terms of the line. Like, if I look at that, that time on ice distribution, that's a lot of weird numbers. Like, and I know you're playing your Lilligan horses or whatever, but minutes tonight. Yeah. It's 11 just too many. Yeah. yeah. That's, so he's not playing next game. Lily's out. So, Absolutely. Boys, we're, listen, it's the common denominator. Who's he playing with? Sure. Mm-hmm. Except for the plays that he made that I was most upset about were not ones that involved Giordano. They were ones where it's him going, man, if there's one thing that Florida, like the eyes light up is when the puck goes back and Lilligren is going in to retrieve it. It feels like they send the whole team, like go in there, 
get it from him. He's going to make a mistake. I actually wish we had a pack of this, but it feels like there was like three or four retrievals that Lilligren went for in this game. And they just all ended up on Florida stick. Like Gio, he he knew he wasn't going to move the puck in those situations. I know. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Like I, I, I don't, I, I'm obviously Sammy. I'm with you. Like the Giordano thing is really tough right now. He looks like a guy who's on the last legs of his career. He looks like a guy who signed for the veteran minimum is 39 years old, which he hadn't all year. But either way, like if if there's one thing that I would say, lock it down, I feel most confident in going to the next game. It's that Justin Hall will 100% be back in the lineup in replace of Timothy Lilligren. So, they will not have that happen again. There is no way. Might so you're gonna, you're gonna, too. I was going to say, you're going to go back to Gio and Hall, which got absolutely barbecued. For yep. the whole the whole last series, you're going to go back to that, run it back. Buddy, it, it, it's it's not a perfect situation. I'm not like, yeah, I wish I could tell you that there were two other good players that are there for them, no, but it's not. I'm just saying that they're not going to sustain another game of Timothy Lilligren against those four checkers. The only right. thing you can do, because Riley and Shen have been so good, is make Brody and McCabe your two left shot guys and go like Brody Hall, you know, McCabe Lilligren or something like that, but. You know, you, you don't want, I mean, McCabe, I think he played the most on the Leafs D tonight. He did, you know, they use him a lot. So I don't think they're going to suddenly pair him with Lilligren. So yeah, it's pro Geo's probably going to stay in just due to handedness mostly and not mm -hmm. trusting Gustafson. I think handedness and also probably his import to the group. Like it just, he's, yeah. he's felt like one of their leaders all year long. You remember the video that came out when he got the shot block record and just the way the rooms responded, he's the early at the ice game. He's, he's team dad right now. I just, I don't, I don't think he's coming out, even though, man, there are just some times too, where when you see him go back to get a puck and someone else has that jump and that speed on him, it is really, really terrifying. But yeah. And then Lilligren was out there again too. It, maybe not purely his fault, but the, the huge breakaway save that Samsonov makes in the third period is also a guy get, I think it was Verhage that gets a, a jump on Lilligren and yeah. beats him to the net and gets that chance. It's just that I, I can't imagine that they look at the tape tonight and circle the plays that Lilligren had and go, yeah, uh, where, like, where was the good in the 11 minutes? Yeah. yeah. No, I agree. Um, you know, what is interesting now is that the Leafs have scored two goals in four straight games. Just two goals in four straight games. You know, I don't know. Does that incentive for Gustafson at all? Is someone who can create and move it a, a bit better? Mm. I don't know. To me, Florida's too good offensively, and, and you're going to get your chances against them, so you don't need to force it. But if there's reason to add Gustafson, yeah. that might be it. I think I the biggest I, their biggest adjustment for the next game is shoot the puck into the net as opposed to into the blocker and into the catcher and into the pads of Borowski. He's good down low, eh? Like he's, he's like along, I mean, he's one along, uh, or one along, anyway. along the ice and like down low, like when the pucks, you have to really try to elevate it on him. It just feels like when you though they filter those ones from the point or they try to cut it across. It just, he really is solid along the ice. Yeah. He made that like jumping save on the Matthew Matthews high blocker shot. Like he's he's able to get across. He, this is why it's got to be rebounds and tips and all the stuff that worked for them in round one has to come back. I was mm -hmm. definitely thinking to myself, I wish Alex Lyon played just a little better in round one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I sure wish Alex Lyon would have mixed in one or two more saves and been able to keep the net and they went with the hot hand thing. Yeah, but the Bobrovsky story, this is just ta tale as old as time hockey stuff, right? Is of course the guy that everyone kills the Panthers over going. Imagine how good the Panthers would be if they don't have the Bobrovsky contract and he's the reason why they're up 2-0 in the series, like more than yeah. just about anything else. Um, yeah, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I just, the, to the Gustafson thing, just to kind of close that out, could you just imagine that they get an icing and they're able to throw the Kachuk Bennett line over the boards and Gustafson's out there? Like, yeah. No, no. Give me Gio. Yeah, that's what I mean. Is just, it's just, it's not. You can't, I, I just don't think you can. Yeah. Um, is there, is there oh, anybody else? Is there any other black aces around there that they can f dig up? What's Topi Niemela up to? How's he doing with the Marley? Connor Timmons. Yeah, where's, where's, where's old Victor Mette at? Call somebody Mette. else. Uh, oh, my God. Mac Hollowell. Just, mm -hmm. I guess uh, when it gets okay. to this time of year, you're not going to have a ton of guys that like are ready to mix in or whatever, but it is really starting to become an issue here with their decor, with the with the depth of it. I, I gotta say, know, guys, the the Leafs. How many have, guys? Oh, sorry. 
the Leafs have the old guys who are important to their team and Florida doesn't. So three days off between games for Gio, for Tavares, you know, for those guys, not a bad thing for Ryan O'Reilly. I think it's it may play in the Leafs' favor having an extra day here. Well, it mm. might play in the favor of their young guys too. They just played 27 minutes for Matthews and Marner. I think that they're probably going to enjoy the extra day off. Just, I would say, don't enjoy it too much, fellas. Like, yeah, just make sure don't, that don't uh, show up like right Phil Kessel thing. looking yeah. with a sunburn. Yeah, do the right thing. <laughs> oh my God, could you imagine Nylander shows up with the sunburn? Oh, I can imagine <laughs> it. Yeah, just no, it can't happen. Oh, uh, okay. I, I, this is probably a bit of a frustrating episode for some people because they probably want a little bit more blood, but I also think we have to note the power play changes and how much better it looked with, again, exactly what our video coach, Justin Bourne, said they needed to do, which was take Mitch Marner off the flank in which he is not effective on. Yeah. Flip, Flip him up. to his forehand side. Let Matthews be on his forehand side, and they'll be able to create. You create, can still seam pass it. Not to mention having an O'Reilly, so you have a nice down low option. The play he makes, so Mitch Marner, it's a shame the rest of the game went the way it did because I thought Marner in the first period was unbelievable. You know, True, like yeah. controlling the play, making these elite little passes. He shot it. He tried to get to the net every chance he could. Like he was the guy you know he can be. So is this the play we're going to get where he makes the pass? Yeah, Into yeah, the right bumper, here. out. Like, I mean, yeah. look at those little plays. Mm -hmm. retrieving it the spin, spin like taking it to the net and oh, then put it across my god like, that's, that's disgusting not many guys in the league like less than five can that make was a good time guys. that was an I enjoyable love that. time of my I life that. Was, i enjoyed that a lot <laughs> <laughs> i that at that point in time in my life when it was two nothing there was real joy in my heart uh <laughs> I, was, I was thrilled and yeah, you can even see it with just like the Florida defenders where there's oh. just guys like spinning around, turning around, putting their every part of their body out, just desperation flops on the entire shift. Yeah. And Matthews on that goal, we should note, amazing box out of the Florida D to make Ryan O'Reilly, you know, have a lane to shoot that too. It was power play looked really good. You know, they had a yeah. few of them. I don't think Florida had a single power play tonight, did they? They had one. They started the third period on That's the power right. play That's and right. they the, didn't really got one shot. On Toronto did a really good job and it kind of tilted the ice. Back in Toronto's favor. I, I will say that I like, yeah, there's a lot of positives to draw from this game, but ultimately you are down 2 0. And I, I just, I can't help but feel like it, it, this. I don't mean, the, I've said that I made this point before. I don't think that ghosts are like your franchise is cursed because of, you know, you uh, having a bad owner who did a bad thing one day. Like, that's not what it is. Or the fans caring too much, or you got up on your couch at the wrong time. Like, I, I don't believe those things. But what I do believe is that in those big moments where, again, the ice shifts, and, like, it happened in that end of that first period where a bad goal goes against you, and the building gets really quiet, and everything gets tight, like, that's where I think that your past haunts you a bit. And, and that's why, to me, again, the reminder here is that just because they won one playoff series in seven seasons does not mean this team knows how to win. And to me, that was what the, the game is tonight. So I, I, I'm only looping it back to kind of the negative criticism thing here because I feel like we've been just like giving them sweet kisses for the last half hour. And I just, I am very, very upset still with their inability to close this game. And yes, show the killer instinct. I, I just needed to loop that back because it was getting too sweet, too nice. Fair, fair, man. Um, but yeah, rapid fire it, it, time. Yeah. All right. Rapid fired up. Uh, anything yeah. that you guys feel like we have missed so far? I have, I can start if you'd like. Sure. Go ahead. Lafferty is never coming out of the series. Great. Regardless pace. of an injury. Great pace. Good hit. He held the puck and rushed it tonight after we talked about it on our shows. Yeah. Great. Just for a team that really is clearly not going to win the speed battle. It was nice having a guy who just looked like he belonged in the series was fleet of foot made some plays and was just noticeably positive. So good for Sam Lafferty for getting in the lineup. Uh, even if Nyes is out, I'm, I'm ac if Nyes is out, sorry, I'm actually curious whether or not he might be the guy that gets the biggest jump. I wonder if that's the 11 and seven key for them. Nyes is out. Lafferty stays in, um, you know, and they don't put Aston Reese in. They just add Hall. Yeah. I think that's probably the best solution for them. Don't you? Go 11 mm -hmm. and seven. 
I mean, I'm not, I'm not exactly <laughs> pining for Zach Aston Reese. So fine. Yeah. Like whatever. It just makes Marner <laughs> just, and Matthews play another 26 minutes, but yeah. you, at this point you don't care. You, you, you know, you no. can't win the series without winning game three. So, well, the yeah. true irony of this you is if the mean. Leafs, you know, the beginning of this Leafs core starts with everyone bitching about Matthews and Marner not playing too much with Babcock, and it ends with people bitching about Matthews and Marner playing too much under Keefe. <laughs> yeah, fair it enough. would be a very poetic book ending. I can't say what Ilya Samsonov said exactly after his performance tonight. Oh, mm. did he do bad words? Ilya Samsonov on Bobrovsky playing well. Quote, I don't give a bleep, end quote. <laughs> Who asked him that? Great. Yes, 10 out of 10 for that. <laughs> yeah, I just can't. Who? It had to be a Panthers reporter that asked that question. Like, are you, you proud of the, of the fellow Russian? Yeah. I don't know what the question Thomas was. Thomas Lynham not my job to pump his tires. That is uh, why. <laughs> What do you think about him, the other goaling playing well as a guy is down 2-0? And yeah, that's a that's a wild move. I, I think yeah. if you're I mean, especially considering if you're gonna power rank the reason that this game, this series is two nothing, the you know, the goaltending matchup would probably be pretty high. Yeah, and I know he hasn't made he's it, there's a goal every game where you're like it's not a good goal and so you don't want to say the goaltending's been good. He's made some saves. I don't want to follow him on another big goal. breakaway save tonight to keep him in it. Uh, I think hey, that's overly right. reductive. Well, the Leafs have had the second best goalie in both games by far. Sure, and they had the best goalie in the first series. Like so this yeah, is just like For sure. This and this is but, but, but I mean it's 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 fair. Like I mean they they gotten great saves from their goalies and the Leafs haven't. I think the Leafs have gotten great saves from Samsonov. Like I would sure. argue that he has given them some really great saves. He's clearly playing through something. I, I don't know exactly. Yet. You said the second goal tonight, right? Is the one you really Awful. didn't like? Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's a bad one. I don't like it either. But ultimately, again, Florida, they go up 3-2. It becomes very clear. Next goal is the biggest goal of the game. There isn't another goal. But Samsonov shut the door from that standpoint or from that point forward. And he made a huge breakaway save. He made a couple mm -hmm. scrambly saves. He made a bunch of, there was one shift in the second period when everything was going to pot, where the Tavares line was on the ice for five turnovers and six shots against. And Samsonov made like a bunch of, a bunch of saves there. He lost the puck that got yeah. tipped high. But ultimately, it's Listen, just like again. I, I just I'm I not saying he's been. I'm not saying I'm not saying like he's. Goalie, I'm not saying goalie. he's. I'm not saying he's been bad, but he's been by far the second best goalie. Sure, that's it. Um, and he's now one and four at home in the playoffs. That when he was like dominant mm -hmm. on home ice in the playoffs. Is that maybe and more losses than season. he had at home all regular season? No joke. He he. Uh, it's crazy. No, it's just no. It's just the Leafs in general that they are now one and four on home ice. It's it's bad. That's bad. Not gonna win many Stanley Cups going one and four on home ice. Curious to see. Think Samsonov's got his bell rung a little bit. Couple of pucks to the head. That he's not shaking off. Like, and if he is, like, is Wool gonna play? Because he can't put a concussed goalie in the net. No, nah, mm, that's he, a he'll... scary Go thought. If they go down three zero, Wool plays game four probably. I could the, the Joe Wool train all of a Ooh. sudden he turns the Leafs tides. They're behind in the series. Here comes the superhero story. Legend Joe. in Toronto forever. This is where we're at, eh, fellas? I was just gonna say we're at the, first of all, the I like they're down 2-0 and it already feels horrific. But you even just saying that, yeah, that's right. The what comes after two, the number three. three. <laughs> they could yeah. be down 3-0. Is just saying that out loud gave me a different kind of shiver. I to, to to the regular or sorry to the um point about the losses at home. That's what I'm talking about about the building seeping in and where I don't blame fans whatsoever. Like I just don't like I, I don't think this is on fans. Great I wish tonight. that sometimes they'd be able to stay and cheer loud, but they were loud tonight again. But I just again I feel like the building gets tense, the players get tense. It's hard to ignore like the correlation. If like you guys know this around work, okay? You guys have been Sam. You are a producer. Like one of the biggest gripes I ever have with a producer when I'm doing a show is if the producer starts melting down behind the glass because something's going wrong or they're looking panicky and they're freaking out, then it I have to talk to them during the break and go, hey, don't do that because now I'm starting to feel angry and panicky like I'm picking up on your mood. And so I do think there's like a touch of that when it comes to the home ice thing for the Leafs. 
I don't know how that translates with a rowdy snowbird crowd that is apparently not allowed in if they're Canadian, whatever the hell happens here in Florida on Sunday. But I do think that's a thing. But the regular season point, it's been so pervasive throughout the Stanley Cup playoffs and that and we've already been talking about how lackluster this regular season was. One of my like back recess thought is is the NHL headed for NBA stuff now? Like Mark Giordano, old guy wearing down, guys being injured, getting into the playoffs like the Ryan O'Reilly types. Teams are losing at home, left, right, and center. Kraken won the first game on the road against Dallas again. Um, 82 game schedule. Uh, it just, this is a nightmare for regular season hockey. I got to tell you, like this combination of things that have happened here, not good for a regular season that already felt like it was hurting. Yeah, no, it's really strange. And yeah, I, I think it is feeling some of that fan energy for sure. But I think there's more pressure there for the Leafs too. You know, making the adjustment to be in the favorites and having home ice was not what this was supposed to be. It was supposed to be a grind through the best teams. And, um, you know, time to wake up. You're about to yeah. lose to a team people don't think is the best team. And yeah, like I think this is now continuing the trend. What we talked about it today on Real Kipper and Born Borny, but... I think it's like the road teams have like a 600 winning percentage. Yeah. I think they're like 32 and 19 going into tonight or 33 and 19 now. So yeah. maybe that's boding well for the Leafs. I wonder if it actually Gotta continues this way. Like if, if that trend continues all the way to the Stanley Cup where it just it feels completely irrelevant who has home ice, mm -hmm. whether or not the league actually looks at tinkering with something with the playoff format. Like... If, if that's something they at least discuss at like the next owner's meeting, right? When we get the leak, when all the guys go down to Boca Raton and have themselves a time and they go, and they go, here's two reporters that brought up two minor issues with the game. And Bettman goes, the game is totally fine. <laughs> Everybody, <laughs> up. we're doing great. Over Franchise values have never been higher. We're thinking about expanding some more. We're thinking about adding a second team in Phoenix, actually. So why don't you <laughs> shut up? <laughs> That's the way that this thing seems to be trending. But at least it's a point of curiosity for me. Uh, I'm done yeah. with rapid fire stuff. I'm dejected. I think I'm going to go eat ice cream in bed. Like, I think mm. that's the move. Uh, you know what? I, I'd say I'll join you, but I mean from my own house. Otherwise, it'd be a weird show. <laughs> I, Dude, honestly, <laughs> I've, I've never been against a cuddle. Like, I'm a cuddly I'm, guy. I'm, I'm coming over. I'm coming over. over. I... Uh, Plug I'm gonna down. go watch. I'm gonna go watch the second half of Lakers and have a beer and oh, try to yeah. and try to forget oh, that the Leafs game oneself. happened. Yes. Yeah, it's definitely gonna happen. So again, uh, follow us on Twitter and Instagram at JD Bunkus at Sam A McKee at JT Born. Uh, reach out anytime. We love when people do it, uh, even when it's gripes, even a uh, little gripe, little therapy. You fired away. Hit the thumbs up for God's sakes on YouTube. I, you have vultures. All right. There's th we see the numbers <laughs> of the like tens of thousands of you that watch this thing that take the second hit the thumbs up like it's one little button that you have on the youtube stop being a vulture stop doing this for free you could also share it that would be nice you know we would appreciate that immensely and then you can listen to our other shows uh real kipper and born and the jd keep bunkers podcast i can have what, what are you gonna say there borny i say keep us employed that's all that all that stuff does it's validating for the show yeah and it, uh and it's free Kipper is Kipper's not there tomorrow. Uh, this is his Super Bowl day. I can't believe he's missing tomorrow, but he's going to his oh, son's yeah. graduation. Yeah, Martyr he's going to his well and they lose. He would have loved yeah. this. Yeah, this is, this is his his <laughs> absolute uh, Super Bowl tomorrow. So I'm in the big chair tomorrow. So look forward yeah. to more of this conversation, dude. What? He's got to cancel. He's got to you know cancel his son's graduation fire alarm at his son's <laughs> graduation so that he can dance on the leaf's grave the way that he yeah. so desperately wants to like uh, what are yeah. we talking about here how is yeah. that even, he's got to phone in even for like two minutes no, I'll call, i'm gonna call him for sure yeah yeah you gotta get him on i've got chris Versteeg again tomorrow uh two-time stanley cup champion and inventor yeah. of the clever app which if you're a parent and you've got kids in hockey you should definitely check out um yeah who do you guys have other than kipper gloating on the phone uh mike rupp too Oh, Rob. Nice. Yep. Leaf hater day on the fan. Yeah. So gotta be. It's <laughs> a lot of crazy tough day. Oh, uh, also, Sean Avery will be on. <laughs> just yeah, like yeah, we're, yeah. we're just and Mike, the Mike here. Commodore next. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ryan Whitney, maybe. <laughs> just yeah. get them all in. Mark yeah. Mathot, come on down. <laughs> yeah, like bring them all out. Bring them out. Bring them out. All right. Uh for JD Buckus, for Sam McKee, for Justin Bourne. Uh enjoy your beer, bed, and ice cream, folks. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Boo-hoo. Night-night.